Cheeks on the 30th of July, 2017. Many years ago, I gave a talk where I said that the hardest thing you'll have to do in your life now, and from then on, would be to hang on to your sanity. The reason being that the big agenda that took many, many years, generations actually, of planning and the creation of NGOs, non-governmental organizations, under the United Nations umbrella, all funded by your tax money and with uh, big foundations, the private foundations owned by the big multi-billionaire and trillionaire boys and gals, would be pushing so much on you to bring in the global society, which is another term, of course, for world government, of course. And you really find that under all these hundreds and hundreds, actually thousands of NGOs worldwide, they're all getting money funneled to them by the same sources, but they're all under a small umbrella, really, of the globalists. To go back into the at least the 1800s, we can trace them with the Lord Alfred Milner Group and the Cecil Rhodes Foundation uh, that set up the embryo of this whole structure where they would have non-governmental planners, although they'd be in and out of government too, many of them, like Lord Milner himself, and they would run the empire, and then they would bring it into the, the American empire that would take over, and then they would create the world government. But they even talked about creating world wars to so weaken nation states, they would happily submit to a world government and give up their sovereignty. This organization is so alive and well, it's mind-boggling to realize its effect throughout the whole planet because it set up the, the whole structure and drafted up the whole structure for the amalgamation of the European Union under a government. It also set up and the, 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 the structure for the amalgamation of the Americas into one governmental system. They haven't quite got it yet, but they're still working on that. But they did come out in 2005 in Canada and talk about it and I think the head at the time for the CFR for Canada at that time was Lloyd Axworthy. And he's still on the go today. Because uh, they, they never give up, these guys, for their goal for world government. Never give up. And it isn't just a world government. It's a society across the planet that's going to be so rigorously controlled from birth to death, right down to even population growth or decline. That's in their power too. And and how many, many how, even what you'll even work at if if you'll even if you'll even be born if they need you or not literally this is the complete technocratic ink uh, system that was planned a long 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 time ago in fact technocracy ink only came out in the 1930s I think it was but it was on the go long before in the quieter circles of the same group going way back into the 1800s. And it's never given up. It gave us the Royal Institute for International Affairs, private organization that ran the empire for Britain. Still does, by the way. They call it the Commonwealth today. And it set up a branch for the whole of the European Parliament, for the members there, to make sure they're all on board with it too. So for all those idiots that they really think their voting makes any difference at all, uh, these guys already have a different master. They've already given their allegiance to a different master. Same in Canada and the States. Carl Quigley also talked about them in the U.S. as well, as well as Britain, and he was their own historian for a while because they have their own personal, real history of the world because they had so much to do with creating it. That's what Quigley said himself. That's why he wrote his book, Tragedy and Hope. He said their effect on the history of the world was so incredibly powerful and and vast that, that he thought it was time that the public should know what they'd done. They're still at it today. You have the appearance of your vote counts, etc., etc., and the accidental view that things are just happening in your lifetime as you stumble down through time. Nothing is further from the truth. Nothing is further. From. It's a what an incredibly well worked out con job this is, really, to make you think they're just stumbling along, and scientists are just trying to fathom why you're all going sterile and things like that as you stumble along. What a joke it all is, really. What a complete joke. And they still churn out 
documentaries on the same, with the same excuses and, and just big puzzle, big question marks at the end of the series. Like, we just don't know. And we can't do anything about this or that. What a joke everything really is, isn't it? Isn't it really? Uh, you have massive movements right now. and This is the big push. The UN is pushing even harder now because they've had articles out through their constant foreign relations and foreign affairs and different magazines and yada, 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 because they're all part of the same structure. Don't forget the United Nations. All the, the, the groups under the United Nations were created by the Royal Institute for International Affairs, CFR. They created the World Bank, the IMF, and all these other central banking systems that actually lend to the whole planet. They're privately owned, but this one institution was behind the creation of all of them. And before that, they created the League of Nations, and then the United Nations. Private organizers. You don't vote for these people, but they, they literally plan your whole life, what's going to happen in it. Right down to your carbon taxes and all the greenhouse gas nonsense and all the other things that are going to literally uh, put you into poverty, which they call austerity, teaching you to be austere, because all your spending money will have to go in penalties, 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 just for living. Isn't that wonderful? And it's all bogus science, you know that. There's way more scientists disagree with it all as opposed to the ones who are on board with it, the United Nations, because they're all getting big, big, fat paychecks. Corruption is rampant through everything that you take for granted and things that you've been, you've been trained to believe are on up and up. And they're there to help you or help everybody else. You'll never find so much corruption as you will within these organizations. And the big boys at the top allow it to go on. They don't care. They know money is a joke to begin with, since you even have private people brought in from other countries sometimes to manage your central banking systems. People who are obviously in on the big joke of how to add zeros to the big number. And keep it all going, because it's based on nothing based on nothing at all. And that's why your cash gets worth less and less with its purchasing power. They say that literally from the 1950s, late 50s onwards, say one and a half thousand dollars of that, that era's money, you need about 30 odd thousand to 35 thousand dollars to buy the same amount of things that one and a half thousand could have bought back then. And we think that's all normal because you've been trained to believe it. This somehow is like a law of the universe that, that, that the money must be worth less and less every year. It's because it's based on fiction. By a clique, a gang. An authorised gang that authorised itself. And gains legitimacy only because generations now have accepted it all. Most things actually that become legitimate are based on the same things. Royalties is the same across the planet, it doesn't matter what country you look at, even Japan or China. One family would have a big family and would slaughter the ones next door. And eventually they could slaughter more and people and create a big gang. And then you bring in a, this wonderful con job called money. And then you could rent mercenaries and armies. And you become, le but eventually become legitimate. You might even send your sons and daughters off to university. And then it's okay, you're, you're really illegitimate then. And then you get respect from the people who treat you as something special because you're stinking rich. But you're only stinking rich because your great, 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 great grandfolks slaughtered all the folk around them to get the money in the first place to start it all. It's, it's a racket. And reality truly is a racket, to be honest with you. The amount of cons you can pick in a day just by reading the news, it truly is astonishing. Because everything, even all your entertainment, everything's weaponized and agenda-driven. You can't, you can't get anything clean on anything because it has to have certain things inserted in there to make sure everybody gets their indoctrination into the new PC. You all know this. We go along with it regardless. To me, it's astonishing. Because I don't watch TV. Occasionally, I'll get a disc sent once in a while of something uh, that'll show me, I've given an idea. Of, of, even that's rare. Uh, I don't really get to see what folk are watching daily. I don't get my updated indoctrination by the day. 
until eventually you'll accept anything that's pushed on you, thinking it's all quite natural, only because your mind has been upgraded step by step by step to make it so. You never rationally thought through anything, but you'll adopt all the opinions and views. You don't know. It's, it's a perfect system. Perfect. Perfect system. I was thinking of the rise and fall and all the rest of it, of civilizations. And then you have the decline in the Roman Empire and in the Greek Empire before it and so on. And other ones have come and gone even before that. And you often, you look at this, the systems that they had at the time when they were falling. They had the, the, the massive tax bases on the go to keep a big, big wealthy elite at the top, including all the bureaucrats that ran it all, who were all corrupt as well. And big armies too to go across the planet to demand the taxes and force on people. And even force them to take money. A lot of countries didn't use money. So they had to bring in the money boys' managers to distribute the cash in order to start taxing it all back from them and stop them bartering amongst themselves. That's how money was always introduced. But even at that, the, the corruption and the lifestyle that they led and the parting and so on, even in Rome, they, this is well documented, that they would stop breeding the women would abort their children, had different ways of abortive against and so on, to reduce pregnancy or get rid of pregnancy. And they'd also, there was also infanticide, big time, with the upper classes, until even they weren't producing enough children to take over, so they say. And a lot of women preferred women and guys preferred guys and so on. It gets to that stage, and then bang, in came the so-called barbarians, They were literally having parties when the barbarians were coming. They couldn't believe. It was unthinkable that their lifestyle and and this power they had would be shattered just like that. They couldn't believe it, even, even when it was happening. And that's what's happening to us too, across the world in the so-called civilized countries, because you've all been under attack for an awful long time, and you don't even know it. In fact, your own behavior and how you express it is part of the indoctrination of the takedown that you've been given by your masters. And you do have masters that plan it all. They have big world meetings all the time, all the time, stacks of them every year, stacks and stacks and stacks on different aspects of society and humanity and psychology. And they work on the problems. And they know exactly how to to literally take you from one point of view and within two or three years up to five years max have millions of people completely reverse their opinions on something. That's how easy it is today to do. And it works awfully efficiently, very, very well. Very few people have their own minds today. Very few people have them. In fact, you've got more chance of going into a so-called primitive society in some country and finding more of someone with their own mind because they haven't had the indoctrination media pollution that we've had. An indoctrination pollution from education. And you couldn't con them. You couldn't con them. You couldn't force uh, a so-called primitive tribe to suddenly change its ways by sending in people to explain to them why they must start living in austerity or stop eating this or stop eating that and stop uh, cooking their their food because of the smoke or whatever. You couldn't try and stop them and see how far you get because their reaction is a normal one. They're not fools. It takes education and indoctrinations to create a fool and lots of them. That's what we've had. And I'm not making this up. The big boys that helped create this present part of your culture at this time, many of whom are long dead, wrote lots of books about it, how they were doing it, their organizations they belonged to, and how easy it was, even 50, 60 years ago, through what they'd learned, to to literally change the minds of millions of people uh, and how long it would take to do it in different areas, etc. But today it's perfected. So say, look at Rome, look at the Messer, look at today where we are. You think that's all by accident? Do you? Do you think that's by accident? Quite a few years back, I, I mentioned something someone sent me. It was, um, it, was, it was from a TV program in Britain. And it was called Bouncers, about bouncers at nightclubs. 
in a city in Wales in the UK. And it's worth seeing. Look at the mess of the people here that you're looking at, the mess of them, in every possible way, male and female, falling about in the streets, trying to get into these nightclubs, already out their minds on booze and God knows what kind of drugs and so on. But also look at their features. No one looks what I used to would call normal at one time. Their bodies are misshapen. Their features are misshapen. And they simply look as though they're in a bad way. Even trying to think they're in a pretty bad way. A lot of men, too, are definitely estrogen dominant with their diets and other things that have been done to them. An extra estrogen doesn't help the women either, by the way. It's, it's definitely associated with cancers. And again, I'll, I'll touch on something else I mentioned years ago, because I've done different talks on the increasing infertility in the West, and I've put up some links in the past to do with this, and one of them was to do with the dis- disappearing male that came out years ago. But the sperm count was studied every year by professors, universities in the States at the time, and it was declining big time in every generation. Every few years they would test, 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 and plummeting, plummeting. And then also put up uh, assault on the male, done by the BBC, and then assault on the male revisited. And I'll put the links up too. A very good, again, going over the same evidence. And it's evidence. It, it's not guesses here. It's not like the, we're guessing about the weather, uh, guessing about the climate. Let's guess about things, which the UN loves to do when they have a big agenda on the way. Uh, we're talking about scientific fact here, which is repeated. See, fact has to be studied. And when you study it and you follow the same formula, you must get the same answer. If you don't get the same answers, then your findings are not conclusive, you see. They're wrong. You have to have conclusive evidence. Well, when you do the same experiments to do with the sperm, etc., over and over and over again, and it's plummeting, 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 and they know what phthalates and so on and artificial estrogens are at work here, altering the chemistry of your entire body. And they're all in agreement with it. There's plastics everywhere. This stuff's weeping everywhere. We know darn well it's coming from the different pesticides, etc., which are used by the big, big business corporations. Now, they've known this from, from probably 50 years ago, <laughs> but uh, nothing's been done about it so far. Which tells you another thing, too. This ties right in with uh, all the nonsense they give you for bringing in uh, stacks and stacks of people from from, the, say, the Islamic countries because you're not having children in the West. Well, they never touch on the fact that the fertility is plummeting in the West. And granted, too, getting back to what I was saying earlier with, with ancient Rome and so on, the West has been trained not to have families. Uh, they've been trained to have be perpetual children, have fun, 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 until they're, they're geriatric and that's what it's all about. And, and the ones who try to have children often can't have children. And many of the children, how many of them go to the abortion, abortion factories? When a society treats the byproduct of pleasure in this fashion, that society is finished. It's finished. I've read the articles before with, by Julian Huxley, who was the first head of UNESCO for the United Nations. And he was up there with Planned Parenthood and so on. And he said we've got to knock humanity off his pedestal as being the supreme being on the planet. In other words, dehumanize us and dehumanize us. And they've done it awfully well. It took a while to do, but they did it really. It wasn't really a long time at all. Not really. And it's still pushing out. It's taught as a, a mantra of a religion that it's the right thing to do, but to be in charge of your own body and so on. And don't have children. But by the same token, the same people who, who, who have pushed that upon you want to bring in replacement people. Well, wait a minute here. There's too many of us are not enough. What do you want here? What do you want? Well, the answer is quite clear. They don't want you. That's what they want. 
They don't want you. And you better have a good look to see why that is and who's doing it to you. Hmm? And the, the people they're bringing in too are going to be subject as well, with their, their children they're going to have and are having, to the same problems of infertility, estrogen dominance. They won't have the descended testes in the male. That's one of the big things that are happening now with the estrogen dominance because the, the, the fetus in the, uh, in the womb, the, the male, in the first three months of pregnancy, he, he's uh, already affected to, be, to become infertile down the road. And his testes aren't even growing. And, and, and testicular cancer is, is up about threefold, at least, to what it was a few years back. Nothing's been done about this to stop it. They know what's causing it. And they always come back, well, you see, you know... Plastic is so, so ubiquitous amongst all of society. Everyone, you, wherever you look, you're, they're using it and you're to, to wrap things and so on and foodstuffs and, and you, just, you can't do without it. You want to be civilized. You know? Well, hey, at one time, you, you didn't need uh, all the plastics everywhere. They had papers that dealt with this. You know, even butcher paper had dealt with this that nothing went through and it wasn't plastic. The same papers too would wrap cheese and everything else. Now they tell, oh no, we're going to wrap everything with plastic. No, do they re- if they really have to wrap everything with plastic and they know what plastic is doing to people, that's only one of the, the, the areas, remember, uh, then it's intentional. It's intentional. And, and they know what they're doing. This ties in to world depopulation. You understand? And world, eventually world infertility. You understand that too. When the big boys churn out books and mantras for a for hundred years about too many of you, and you just eventually turn deaf ears to it because you're so used to hearing it, you ignore it completely. And yet it's happening. It's happening. Uh huh. It's happening all right. And as I say too, if you look at the salt in the meal revisited, you'll see the tests that they do, to prove to you that these artificial, chemically created uh, mimickers, estrogen mimickers and endocrine mimickers, literally are making cancer cells, well, actually causing cancer cells to grow in the women too, in the breast, etc. They're well, well aware of this. It's proven over and over. The tests are there and they show you how it's done. But they don't really stop it, are they? They're not going to stop it, and they'll bring you. They'll get your milk and, and plastic bags like you do in Canada. Do you think that's just just to make it cheaper? What, who, who's kidding? Who? When I was small, milk always came in glass bottles, and glass is recyclable, and glass also it could get reused over and over and over again. But they bring you plastic from the from the big oil industry byproducts, eh? plastic, but also. They, n- they know darn well what it's going to cause and what it has caused, but they're not going to stop it. I can remember talking about it years ago when they made the fad, and it, w- it was brought out as a mandated fad through all the movies and so on, and you, you mimic what you see in movies, and, and you see the cool people buying bottled water and walking about. All- Everywhere they went, they had a, a little bottle of water in their hands. It was cool to have a bottle of water. I just, I, it's incredible how... How easy it is to make people mimic, like like monkeys, to make them mimic what they see on television or in movies. It's just scary to me. And sure enough, you would see them all the bottles and water, water, water bottle, plastic bottle, plastic bottles. And all the time, the big boys at the top knew, even years before it, what this stuff was going to do to your bodies. Quite easy to target your 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 particular target, isn't it? It's easy to do. You just train them to, to go along with it. And they won't think. They won't think beyond, oh, this is cool. I'm not like look at that guy on TV. Whoa, whoa, you know. Or whatever program it is they watch. That's how easy it is. But as I say, I'll put up some links on this and you can see for yourself. Most folk will forget it because they don't like, they've been taught again. And I've even read the articles from the big scientific bodies that planned it all many, many moons ago. They would teach the people to be, to be positive on everything and only to look towards the positive and to completely, completely 
cut off instantly and turn their back on anything that was negative. Now, by negative, that means any bad news or anything that could be unpleasant. Like, if I keep drinking this stuff or eating this stuff, I'm going to get blah, 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 blah. Oh, don't... The first thing most people do when they hear this is, oh, well, yeah, they'll say that and so on. But they'd never sell it to us if it was bad for us. What kind of children are you? And who are they? Are these people your super parents way up yonder that sell you this stuff to consume? Oh, yes, they will sell it to you. Yes, they do. And they do. They do. Yep. Yep, they do. And they've found, of course, even even these estrogen mimickers, literally in lakes in Florida. And yes, you will see these, these reptiles changing genders. You'll see the fish changing genders, not just the crocodiles or alligators. And... That's how it really, it really works. Well, guess what it's doing to you, eh? And they tell you, even the scientists, they explain it all to you. say, well, what can we do about it? It's all over the place now. And you, and all your food has to come with it. And even line your tin cans inside with this stuff, this very phthalate that causes this to happen. They'll, when I was small, they didn't have that inside the tin cans. No. You had literally a tin can. Mm-hmm. So you really think it's uh, you really think it's all there j- just because they try to get r- rid of waste plastic or something when it, when they don't need to have it inside the tin cans. Hmm? If someone keeps punching your nose in the street and you say, "Hey, stop punching my nose," and they say, "No, I'm not punching your nose." And if you're really trained well, you you might, you might believe, "Oh, well, I guess maybe there's something wrong with me. I'm perceiving it wrongly." They bops you again and again and again. Again, going back into a natural society, so-called primitive. Try bopping them in the nose. You won't get a second chance to do it. They'll react the normal way to you. You've all been conditioned to doubt yourselves. What do I know? What do I know? That's how it's done. It's very, very easy to control people, especially in the so-called media age we are all connected to the same sources of nonsense too easy to control you and update you and upgrade you until you're all prattling about the same things daily because it, it, it all comes out from a central source make sure they all prattle about the same things doesn't matter if it's pie in the sky or nonsense doesn't make any difference you're being told what they prattle about and you do when you think about it though here here people are going sterile and cancer has gone up like crazy to do with breast cancer, ovarian cancer, and you've got testicular cancer. And as I mentioned before, the West has been trained that pregnancy is just an un, unnatural, almost an unnatural or unwanted side effect of having fun, sexual fun. That's has been promoted all the time. We are creatures of our indoctrination and whatever has been promoted to us in any generation. It's not been an accident. If you rulers wanted to take you back to the Victorian era where dresses were down to, your, to the ankles, they would do it if it suited them. And you would all follow suit. And for all those who are saying, no, they wouldn't, well, look at all these, these, these big meetings of the feminists are all promoting the burqa. Yeah, yeah, you'll do whatever that's promoted for them to do by their masters. That's how easy it is to train society. So as they're aborting their own children, then, and again, look back at, at, at that link, try to get a hold of it, that one to do with the bouncers, and, and it was done in Wales in 2012. And that's pretty typical what's happening across the country in the nightclubs and outside the nightclubs in the streets, etc., in the cities. Uh, not just in, in Britain, elsewhere too. And the side effect too is all kinds of diseases, of course, naturally. But pregnancy happens as well, and that's not a disease, although it's treated like one. And they, they bought their own children. Think, think about it. Think about society and what's happened here. And at the same time, they're becoming misshapen physically with the estrogen dominance. 
they've got cancers galore spreading up. And they've been taught to literally play uh, as though they're children until, uh, for their entire life with partner after partner, but, but don't have children. Think back again to the decline of, of Greece and then Rome. And remember, too, to bring on the declining of civilizations, you simply reintroduce the same things and promote it from the top if you want it to happen. Think about that. Now, look what they're promoting on television. And I don't watch TV. But I know in the States they've had, uh, I think it's Naked and Afraid, uh, for a, a few years now, where they drop off young couples or whatever into the situations. So the old survival stuff again, all these reality nonsense shows, uh, that step by step lead you to the final thing, which is, is of course, it's nakedness. And so folk are going to look in and watch it. Mm-hmm. And then they started this TV show, supposedly like last year, called Naked Attraction in Britain. It says a British dating game. They call it dating game. Who's kidding who? I think it's BBC Channel 4, anyway, whoever that is. And it says it's a dating game show in which a clothed person selects two contestants from six naked people whose bodies and then faces are revealed in stages from the feet up, a step at a time, you see. The person deciding then appears nude to select one of them for a fully clothed date. This is for adults. But it's, this is this kind of stuff that they used to promote in these awful Hollywood movies for teenagers years ago, uh, these fantasy things. But the, here it is in reality for society to emulate. It says the program then presents their feedback after the date, and, and it premiered on Channel 4, 25th July 2016, and is presented by Anna Richardson, and so on, and so on. And you think it's just to get airwaves shows. And that's what those tell you. Oh, you know, just to get the, the viewers, to get the ratings up. I've seen this kind of nonsense my whole life long, as the big boys at the top destroy your entire culture. But that's the excuse they'll, they'll use for it. And as I say, look at, look at the mess in the streets and, and uh, the bouncers documentary, for instance, and elsewhere. Look at it. Never mind that there's other ones I've mentioned before, too, where they show you them, them bringing them in. Mainly with women, young women, out their skulls with booze and so on, and coma, some of them, into the hospitals. And it's so common. Your society is being destroyed. Completely destroyed. And the youngsters are all they're doing is doing what's been promoted to them massively so. And everything that they watch on television and movies and so on by the big masters at the top who own all these different means of indoctrinating you. Think about it. Think about it. It's, it's called civilization. This is called civilization. Hmm? And they call us the West. Oh, we have the highest standards of living in civilization. Then you have this article, and it says, The bodies of thousands of aborted and miscarried babies were incinerated as clinical waste, with some even used to heat hospitals, an investigation has found. Ten National Health Service, that's the the system that runs it in Britain, National Health Service trusts have admitted burning fetal remains alongside other rubbish, that's other (laughs) other human rubbish too, while two others use the bodies in waste-to-energy plants which generate power for heat. I think they started the whole thing. And I remember reading an article years ago, they first started it in, I don't know if it was Sweden or somewhere, that, that again was avant-garde sexually, etc., etc. And it says that last night the Department of Health issued an instant ban, because the people found out about it, right, on the practice which Health Minister Dr. Dan Poulter branded totally unacceptable. Well, how come it was acceptable before? At least 15,500 fetal remains were incinerated by 27 National Health Service trusts over the last two years alone. Channel 4 dispatches discovered. So here's Channel 4, right? Here's Channel 4. Saying, ta-da, oh, to get the ratings again. Oh, the moral high ground, right? Right? And then you have Naked Attraction, I've just read, from Channel 4 promoting it, eh? Ah? Mm-hmm. 
And everything is shown on this Channel 4, apparently. Everything. Like like bits at a time. Hmm? For your perusal, male and female, doesn't matter. And this is what they promote to all these people who are <laughs> getting brought in in, in alcoholic comas, etc. And the, on the weekends, when they're out to to do the very things that they see pushed and pushed and pushed and pushed and hyper, hyper-sexualized. That's what happens when you become obsessed with it, when it's all that you watch, because it's all that's on everything you look at. Hmm? This was discussed long ago by all the scientists and the social scientists that eventually brought it all to you. So there you have, as I say, them burning, you know... <laughs> burning the unwanted waste from all their fun. And then you have it in Canada too. Aborted fetuses from Canada were burned at waste facility to power Oregon homes. The British Columbia Health Ministry has admitted that fetal tissue and cancerous tissue and amputated limbs have been shipped to Oregon. A waste-to-energy plant in Marion converts the tissue to power for homes. I guess it's eco-friendly. Board of Commissioners in Marion has now ordered the incinerator to stop accepting boxed medical waste to generate electricity. It's only when people find out about it, it's only when certain segments of society still are offended by things. Most folk are not anymore. They don't. They, they, again, when they hear anything that's, that's, that's unpleasant, they, they just don't look at it. You know, don't look at the negative. Oh, it's unpleasant. It makes you feel bad. Don't look at that. Oh. But thank goodness there's folk who are willing to look at the bad. Hmm? Because they've not stopped yet where they're going with all this, you know. Here they are, heating homes and so on, heating places with, with as I say, the unwanted, <laughs> the unwanted effects of their fun. And this is okay. This, this is all okay, apparently. Well, I'll tell you one thing, and I'm not kidding you here. I'm really not kidding you. At the rate, they're, they're, they're totally disintegrating the culture of society and the real civilization that made it a society to begin with. At the rate it's been destroyed, it wouldn't surprise me at all if the same sadistic masters who run this planet will have you eating each other down the road and they'll be very eco-friendly, etc., etc. And they'll bring on the top people in Hollywood to show you, oh, yummy, yummy, so-and-so does it, it must be okay, etc., etc., so here, there, as I say, there you go, you know, they push it all on television and, and children are raised on this stuff to watch their, their naked in this and naked in that. And, uh, and it's all fun, 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 fun. And don't worry if anything happens, the state will take care of any side effects of having fun. Don't worry about it as you all disappear because you're going sterile. The ones who can have children, a lot of them are just... Well, you're getting rid of it. And you call yourselves a set, and you can't see what's happening to you. You can't see. And believe you me, I won't even bother trying to preach to you. I wouldn't even dare preach to you because it doesn't work. When people are so damaged and indoctrinated, it doesn't work. It really doesn't work. And the techniques of Total mind control and total indoctrination, including their indoctrination to respond to, to things that I'm talking about here in a nasty, angry way. It's, it's, it's like Pavlovian responses that, that, that's drummed into them. You can't help people when, they're, when they're, they really are, are, are so far gone. But here you are, as I say, getting taken down. And I'll put some articles up on the falling sperm count and all the rest of it too. And the cancers are exploding and getting, and getting worse all the time and amongst the males and the females, etc., etc. For those that still like to know what's happening. And there are some, of course, that still like to know what is happening. But as I say, they're well aware uh, that what they're doing to society in the West is making them infertile, a lot of them. 
and right down to the cellular changes in the sperm itself. Most of them are, 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 are motile. They won't move. They won't move. They're like dead. And other ones have got two tails and things like that. They're literally genetically altered. They're, they're deformed. And that's what happens too when you end up getting cancers. You become, cells become deformed. And then they reproduce the deformed version. It's called cancer. And that's what happens. But yeah, just have fun, 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 fun till we all drop dead. And then, as they're doing it, as I say, they blame you. And, of course, there's a one thing, too, which they never do mention, the falling fertility rate as far as having live births go. For, look, they want that, and that is, you know. Is, is, look at all the massive work that went into contraception in the West. And the contraception in the West was promoted to keep the population down. And then they tell you there's not enough of you anyway. So we've got to bring people in to replace you. You understand there's a bigger game going on here. You better understand that. They're not stupid at the very top. They're not stupid. Don't ever think they're just stupid. Please, please. Anyway, I'll put these articles up for your perusal tonight. For those that want and can handle it, that is. Another article, too, is to do <laughs> with the big push right now for eradicating borders. There have been some startling articles, or startled articles, I should say, put out by the CFR, Council of Foreign Relations, and the various organizations across the world, all belonging to the same club, that are, that are dedicated and sworn to world government, one way or another, and by any means possible, and every means possible. But... They've been saying, oh, some countries are starting to close their borders again. Oh, we're, we can't have that going back to, to having nations. And, and so the, they came up with this idea, you see. Uh, rather than just have the, the excuse that they've got people who are fleeing uh, wars in the Middle East, etc. The wars, of course, the West are <laughs> just prop on them. <laughs> they keep them at the whole time. But also, and it's all done by design, believe you me. But also to make to, to say, oh, it's also climate refugees now. Well, oh, it's climate refugees. So they're going back to this old thing they tried years ago about the coming catastrophe of, of climate re- refugees. That hasn't happened. But don't let facts stop you, know, you to believe in it because they're awfully good uh, with these people who create these religions at the top, the United Nations and so on. They're awfully good at keeping it going. And you need an awful lot of faith to believe in it. Of course, that's why it is really a religion. And they give you lots of green religions, by the way. Lots and lots of green religions to believe in. Now, you got the UN, the UN, the UN. And they've got articles about, oh, the islands are disappearing. Oh, my God, and so on. Understand something. It's easy to fool people who haven't been educated in a particular area of science. And, for instance, they can say, oh, look, there's a few islands here that have disappeared. Do you understand that there's islands, especially in the Pacific, are appearing and disappearing all the time? Uh, they always have. Not just there, by the way. Not just there. There's islands around Scotland that literally came up thousands of years ago. And, and some even less. That literally were created by sandbanks. And sand moves, understand, in the water. But get enough building up, and eventually it can stay and get above it, and then you can get greenery eventually growing on it, etc., etc. You have a place called Sandy, and and north of Scotland, and that's that was the reason that actually came into existence. So they, they appear and disappear. Now, in the Pacific Ocean, since most of the islands are there, are, not all of them, by the way, there's a lot of sand ones there too, but they're volcanic. And since the crust down below, and the Earth's crust is down below the bottom of the sea as well, is always pushing and heaving and pushing things up. And also, other ones will start sinking again. You have that to, to account for a lot of them going down over time. You have other ones too that are not just sand, but they have porous rock where the sea literally goes in and out of all the time, and the erosion eventually wears them, and they, down they go. But mainly... And you'll, you'll find that, especially with from volcanic ones, as even the old volcanoes under the water start to collapse in themselves, some of the, the outsides of the volcano start to sink along with them. 
So there's many reasons for it. So it isn't, they always push, oh, the sea's getting higher, but really, is it? I've read the articles before where they do the actual physical testing of the sea levels around different countries, and they haven't changed for, for, for the last hundred odd years. But never mind the evidence of physical testing, they prefer to, to, to put equations into their computers to, to get the right answers, you see. Now, here's an article here. It says, the UN disappears, 50 million climate. The reason I'm talking about this is because of, this is the push. It's not all the media right now. Oh, climate refugees. Oh, they're born as climate refugees. You see. Actually, why are they coming to, the, to, to places like Canada? Where they're going to open the, the door. Because Canada is going to stop you heating your, your, yourself by so many different means. We can't afford it anymore up in the north here. And they're going to ban you burning uh, wood stoves and so on. So you should tell these climate refugees, don't come to Canada, they'll freeze to death. In fact, you might get refugees from Canada and the north moving out to some warmer places. So anyway, this is, oh, the UN disappears, 50 million climate refugees, then botches the disappearing attempt, because it didn't work out, so they tried to hide it all. But it says, bureaucratic idiocy at its finest, not only is the original claim bogus of 50 million refugees, but would, would, would happen, you see. The attempts to disappear it, because it didn't happen, didn't pan out that way, are hilariously inept. Amazing, too, all the money they want for all, the, 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 all, all these new uh, guesses they come up with, with for everything. They always want stacks of money. Apparently, they've never heard of Google Cash at the United Nations. Rather, they simply say, we were wrong. They've now brought even more distrust and onto the UN. So what happened to the climate refugees? It's a valid question. And, and this, uh, uh, this author backs it up with census numbers to show you. And he gives you the first part of the story. In 2005, the United Nations Environment Programme, every part, every, everything that they dream up on environment programme, oh, what else can we get cash on? Oh, how about refugees for the environment? Oh, yeah. Anyway, it predicted that climate change would create 50 million climate refugees by 2010. These people, it was said, would flee a range of disasters, including sea level rise, increases in the number and severity of hurricanes, and disruption to food production. The United Nations EP, Environment Protection, or whatever, even provided a handy map. The map shows us the places most at risk, including the very sensitive low lying islands in the Pacific and Caribbean. It so happens that just a few of these islands and other places most at risk have since had censuses taken. See, the ones that should be empty by now or under the water have since had censuses taken of the numbers of people. So it should be possible for us now to get some idea of the devastating impact climate change is having on their populations, which would be massively declining, right, as they all flee, etc. So here's one place. Bahamas, they said that, oh, that was on the climate map, is disappearing. The, Baham- the 2010 national statistics recorded that the population growth increased to 353,658 persons in the Bahamas. The population change figure increased by 50,047 persons during the last 10 years. Didn't decrease. St. Lucia. The Island Nations of St. Lucia recorded an overall household population increase of 5% from May 2001 to May 2010, based on estimates derived from a complete enumeration of the population of St. Lucia during the conduct of the recently completed 2010 population and housing census. So they're increasing. Same with the Seychelles. So this is from this is from supposed to be all fleeing the place by 2010. These are all done in 2010. All these these censuses, right? <laughs> They're just increasing and, and thriving. <laughs> and the Solomon Islands, the latest Solomon Islands population has surpassed half a million. That's according to the latest census results. It's been a decade since the last census report, and that time the population has leaped 100,000 people. But they've got their hands out. All these islands, too, have got their hands out. At least the, 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 the Kwan men at the top have got their hands out for, 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 for aid, you see. You know, it's a big, big money-making thing. And it says, after Asian correspondent posted the story on April 11th, it was picked up by news outlets around the world, such as Investor News, American Spectator, and was cited in the Australian newspaper. It was also reported on Fox News. Since the story appeared, the handy map he cited in his original story, which has and gave it, gives you the link, since the story appeared, the handy map seems to be gone down the memory hole because, of course, these, these places are thriving and not declining. <laughs> it goes on and on and on. That's one article here. That's one. And then we'll go into this one. 
Pacific possible, it says. What is it? New research providing insights into transformative opportunities and challenges for Pacific Island countries for the coming decades. Long-term perspective aims to define what is realistically possible by the year 2040. A joint approach with Pacific Island governments, Pacific Rim countries, development partners and civil society. It's all about getting more and more money for this whole darn uh, nonsense, you know, about to do with climate change, climate change, etc., etc. And they go into other things that will be hit, etc., and what they can do about it, etc., with with climate change and natural disaster preparedness, etc., etc., etc. Big money involved, of course, naturally, because the the UN runs on big, big money. Also, too, I want to just mention the United Nations, that again, is is simply one of the big, big front organizations put up by the Royal Institute for International Affairs, Dash Council on Foreign Relations, is really, you know, uh, really, 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 Staggering. It's a staggering, stag- staggering organization of corruption. And I'll touch on that too. I've got time here. But it says here that the United Nations is losing staggering sums to corruption, mismanagement, and bad decision making. In 2009, the World Health Organization, that, that the part of it, as we all know, recommended that almost everyone be vaccinated. Then in 2010, the British Medical Journal pointed out that medical scientists who advised WHO to declare that it's a flu pandemic, supposedly, to create the, the pandemic, were also paid. So the people who advised the World Health Organization, right, that everyone should get vaccinated, all these medical scientists who had advised them were also paid consultants of the large international pharmaceutical companies who stood to make hundreds of millions of dollars on this upsurge in the purchase of global vaccines. Hmm. And then it goes into... Uh, I says, uh, let me take you on a short UN safari around the world, beginning and ending in Washington, D.C., to see how effectively the UN spends our tax dollars. In 2009, the UN's World Health Organization say, uh, literally had this nonsense of the H1N1 global flu pandemic. And all the science that pushed for it were, were all getting paid by the pharma companies to push it, obviously. So that these were your authoritative sources for all. Then it says here, Somalia is a country engaged in a massive civil war between tribal traditionalists and Islamic radicals called Al-Shabaab. As is common in civil wars, the simple poor people are often left starving on any side or every side. Says UN food convoys usually start from the Indian Ocean coast and move inland towards combat zones in the interior. As the government does not control these areas, NGOs and UN workers often have to surrender large amounts of this food to the terrorists. A 2014 audit of the food aid suggested that 80% of it was stolen en route. It's estimated that $100 million of food aid was taken by Al-Shabaab during this project, thus rewarding the terrorists and contributing to the escalating violence. This isn't new, by the way. When I was small, I can remember them showing little bits on the news. And you see big, big caravan trails along through the Sahara and different places in North Africa. And they've all got the Red Cross uh, stuff on the side of the, of the camels, long, long caravan trails. And this was stuff that was all stolen from us. Actually, it's supposed to be going to other places for folk who really were desperately needing it. And they were getting sold off, this stuff. It's all corruption. But the big boys at the top don't care about that. They don't really care about it at all. This is, then let's not forget the oil for food program that was established by the United Nations, which allowed Saddam Hussein's Iraq to sell oil in the world market in exchange for medicine and for food for poor Iraqi citizens without allowing Iraq to use the money for its army. By the way, they're not mentioning it here, but it was the head of the United Nations, his son, because remember reading the article at the time on there, it was his son who was in charge of this and he he was pocketing millions of bucks. It's utterly corrupt, you wouldn't believe it. So the head of the United Nations, I can't remember if it was Kofi Annan or or Boutros, Boutros, so great, they named him twice. Uh, the, the, his son was doing it. Anyway, in 2005, Paul Volcker led an evaluation that found that about 2,253 well-known companies had made illegal payments totaling $1.8 billion to the Saddam's regime during this flawed United Nations program. It was completely corrupt. Plundering the people who were starving to death because they had an embargo upon them by the West. For food, right? A little bit of food, 
uh, and get all that oil out of there. And, and the United Nations uh, character at the top, his son was in charge of the program and he was filling his own pockets. They really care about people, eh? Then based in Nairobi, Kenya, the United Nations Environmental Programme is one of the United Nations organisations that's got massive boost in popularity because of the climate change controversy. <laughs> in 2005, the United Nations EP predicted that climate change would create 50 million climate refugees by the year 2010. That's the one I just read. There were even predictions that some Pacific islands might disappear because of rising ocean levels. Clearly none of this happened, so your NEP officials disappeared their maps and data and so on and so on. Then there's the United Nations Development Programme, UNDP, which works all over the developing world and strangely has more than 630... Now listen to this, the UNDP Development Programme, right? Using your tax money and all that kind of stuff and your, and your charities and your government donates money to them too, and, and of your money, because it's all tax... Government only... Did, all they have is your money. <laughs> from you. Anyway, the UNDP, which works all over the developing world and strangely has more than 637 millionaires amongst its employees. <laughs> employees, folks, not contributors, employees. How can this be? Believe it or not, the UNDP had a program in North Korea during the late 1990s. The Wall Street Journal took an interest in it pointing out that North Korea and the UNDP had violated all the rules that UNDP sets up for its projects and suggested that up to $100 million of UNDP money was siphoned off by the government of the late Kim Jong-il. Now we know where some of the money for those millionaires may come from. Quite some, eh? Finally, as far back as 1997, investigative journalist Catherine Caulfield uh, published her book on the World Bank called Masters of Illusion. Her goal was simply to see if the World Bank's promises about its projects had borne out results. She found the World Bank projects had a 40 to 50 percent success rate according to the World Bank's own internal evaluations, and many critics will say that these internal evaluations are in themselves suspects. I tend to agree. When I was doing work on a Swiss government development project in East Africa in 2005, this is this author. I came into contact with a number of young Western educated African managers of World Bank projects. Privately, they told me that on average, 40% of each World Bank project budget was lost to corrupt practices. Caulfield's evaluation is probably too generous. And then every year, Canadian taxpayers contribute millions of dollars to the UN, and there's no sign that this practice will end. Our government leaders ignore the mounting evidence of systemic UN corruption, examples of which can be found all over the media. He goes on and on. But I've run out of time again, unfortunately. And I also wanted to mention, too, that Lloyd Axworthy for Canada, who was the head of the CFR for Canada for a long time, in fact, and had a lot to do with the drafting of an AFTA uh, treaty, etc., is in charge of some of these uh, climate refugee projects for, I guess, the United Nations, I suppose. They never stop, did they? Never stop. And that's the real world we live in, eh? A green religion that takes an awful lot of faith to believe in. That's what's called a religion, and that's what Gorbachev said it must be made to be, a religion. And it has been. It's been trained into the youngsters at school. And they haven't stopped because it's a great way to control the whole planet. And with all their carbon nonsense and all the rest of it, they're pushing on us total control of life on the planet. Right down to eating or heating yourself. And so on. That's quite the plan. This makes the Soviet system of bureaucracy, the same with the Nazi system of bureaucracy, look like kindergarten school children, where they're going with all of this. Multi-levels of bureaucracies to run the whole planet from, for everybody, from birth to death, and every aspect of life. And the time really flies in, so I might touch on this again next week, just at least some of the articles I haven't read so far, because it really is important. So from myself, Alan Watt, from Ontario, Canada, it's good night to me, your God, or your gods go with you. <laughs>